Hey guys, welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. In the last part, I presented the photo of the bust of Maximilian Galactica when Von Karma asked us whether or not there was another person there. Anyway, that question has nothing to do with the evidence. Er, that evidence has nothing to do with the question. Objection! Objection! Ah, uh, whatever. Man, if you guys want to tell me about how that's pronounced, you can. I don't really care. It does indeed have something to do with the question. Mo said that he saw Max's silhouette, but he did not actually see the man himself. It wasn't a human being he saw. Yay, good music, smack, smack, smack. <laughs> How was that possible? It's simple, really. What Mo actually saw was that night was Max's bust. Objection. Objection! What are you talking about? Have you tried using your brain at all in this case? The silhouette he just saw just happened to be wearing a cloak. Objection! Objection. There's no reason why you couldn't attach a cloak to the bust. Epic finger point, or a cloak like that could get easily snagged on the bust if they came into contact. Idiot, who in the right mind would put a cloak on a bust? It doesn't matter who put it on the bust. Just wait a minute now, Mr. Wright. Who put her the cloak on the bust? That question is of the utmost importance to this case, don't you agree? No, oh, he caught me. <laughs> so let's have it, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak on the bust? Yeah, we know. It, it had to have been, uh... Russell, because he was wearing the cloak at the time to keep out, like, keep cold. I mean, keep warm. So it must have, like, it must have gotten snagged on the cl the bust when it fell down and hit him. So, it's gotta be him. Uh, gotta be him. F -f -f Fool! Him? You were saying it was the victim himself? Russell Berry? That's what I'm saying. He, I mean, the victim himself plays the cloak on the bust? Place the cloak isn't it really the right way of putting it. And what would be the right way of putting it, Mr. Wright? Explain yourself! Nick, do you really have a handle on all this? I'm fine, Maya. I'm finally putting all the pieces together. Ah, <laughs> jeez. Oh, There's really only one picture I can paint anyways. Alright, so you want to know what really happened that night? Let's step back in time. Acro used a rope to lower the wooden box onto the scene. Then he attached that rope to the bust, and dangled the bust out of his bedroom window directly above the wooden box. At the same time, the ringmaster told Max to wait in his room, and went to the scene. Of course, at the time, the ringmaster was wearing Max's costume. Perhaps he didn't want anyone to recognize him that night. But just as he feared, he was spotted at the entrance of the lodging house by none other than a ventriloquist and his puppet, Ben and Trillo. When the ringmaster arrived at the scene, he bent over to lift the wooden box. And, at, and that's when Acro took his chance and released the rope. Now this is when the magic happens. At the very instant the bust hit the victim, Ah, gotcha. You wait just a second there, Mr. Phoenix, right? As much as you try, as much as you scheme, this just isn't true. It can't be. It's still a little early to get me getting so upset, Miss Von Karma. This circus isn't over yet. Eh? Huh? The, with the shock of impact, it threw up the cloak and got snagged onto the bust. That's when the sound was heard by a witness and he took a look out by the window. Out of his window. That witness was, of course, Lawrence Moe Curls, the clown. When Moe looked out of his window, the cloak had already snagged onto the bust. Now, having completed the crime, Acro naturally went about pulling up the murder weapon. Of course, he had no idea that, that Mo saw the bus being raised with the cloak dangling on it, primarily because in his wheelchair he couldn't see out of his window. So he just kept pulling the bust up. And that is when it looked like he was flying away. And that is how the magical murderer disappearing into the sky came to be. Now you know how the murder actually took place. Now you know who was able to drop the murder weapon from above the scene. 
Epic finger point. Acro, it could only have been you. There can be only one! <laughs> I don't know why I love using that line. That's a... Uh, never seen that movie before, though. Acro's been playing mind games with all of us. He sure has. But he has come to the end of his rope now. But he has come to the whatever. So... What now? You've graced us with a rather long-winded tale. But do you have any evidence to prove that your fairy tale is true? E evidence? Would you stop cracking that whip? It's getting old. In this court, only two things matter. The power of evidence and the power of my whip. Yeah, right. Smack. Don't forget the power of my gavel as well. <laughs> Mr. Wright, the prosecution brings up a good point. Can we see some evidence? Nick, they say they want evidence. I just explain how there can be only one possible murder method. But there is still something unusual about Moe's eyewitness account. Unusual? A contradiction, actually. Okay, then. Use that and get out of that jam. Get out of this jam. That's enough talking amongst yourselves. Proceed, Mr. Wright. Present some evidence in the court that backs your claims. On hard proof that you have unra unraveled... The dang it. You have unraveled the trick to this magic case. Well, let's see here. Let's see, it's pro- you know? It's gotta be the silk hat. Because if Mo saw the hat, technically he saw the bust. So, you know, because- uh, Let's see, it's gotta be this. Take that! Because there was no hat there, technically. The problem is Max's three symbols. You know, the silk hat, the cloak, and the white roses. Those symbols were a problem numerous times during yesterday's proceedings. Yeah, they were friggin' annoying as crap. Yesterday, there were two contradictions in most testimony. The silk hat was one, and the white roses were the other. But the theory I just presented explains all of these contradictions. You fool, do you ever shut up? Max's silk hat was found at the scene of the crime. However, remember what Mo said yesterday. He testified that the criminal he saw fleeing the scene was wearing a silk hat. There's only one explanation for that. The silk hat that Mo saw was actually the bust. Smack. Makes sense. If you look at it that way, then he did see the silk hat. Well, like, he did see the silk hat. Well, sort of. Objection! Objection! Fine, you've got one, but what about the other contradiction? The other contradiction? Yes, remember what that ventriloquist said in court. He said that he witnessed white roses on Max's chest that night. But the clown's testimony doesn't match. The clown said that there were no white roses. I'd like to see you try and explain that one away. Can you do it, Nick? Yes. Of course. Of course. I can explain all of it. What was that? Please recall the instant when the cloak snacked onto the bust. If the cloak snagged onto the bust, what happened to the white roses? Boom. They got, like, folded into it or something. Sort of. Do you get it yet? If the cloak got snagged onto the front of the bust, it means that the white roses would end up on the back of the bust. Ah! Which explains why Moe didn't see it. The white roses were not visible because they were on the back side of the bust. Smack, smack, smack. Order, order. <laughs> Whatever. Alright, what now? This is quite the shocking state of affairs. Mr. Wright's theory still sounds a bit absurd to me. However, let's just keep going down this road for a while and see where it leads. Let's do this, Nick. Maybe Von Karma will finally throw in the towel. Oh, great. Now she's smiling again. Well, so much for that theory. <laughs> Mr. Wright, do you mind? What is it? You took the time to research our circus, didn't you? Well, yes, I did. Is there something making making you think that I didn't? If you did, then maybe you'll understand why I think you're off track. Um, why is that? Motive. This witness feels an incredible debt of gratitude towards the ringmaster. Anyone with any relation to the circus is well aware of this. Yeah, that's true. He was adopted by the ringmaster and pretty much saved by him. Thus, there's absolutely no way someone like this would kill the ringmaster. 
Hmm. Your Honor, I'd like you to hear Akro's story. Learn about his relationship with the Ringmaster and his life up until now. W what do we do? There's no doubting that Akro deeply respected the Ringmaster. Akro's motive. Hmm. Alright, it seems that this case isn't over yet. Very well. However, I feel this is a good place to take a break. I will listen to the rest of Mr. Dingling's testimony after recess. This court will now take a ten minute recess. Alright. Just barely made it out of there.